I'm Roger Thompson here with Mike Lavery with uh, the brand new Trek time trial bike. We're going to get a first view of this bike that has been kept kind of undercover with different paint schemes on so no one could see the lines. And now we've got one of the people that was instrumentally involved in uh, developing this bike. So thanks, Mike, for taking this time and uh, walking us through this piece of art. <laughs> no problem, Roger. This is our new speed concept. This is a prototype bike that we built up for Lance Armstrong uh, for his return to racing. Um, so I can start by taking you through the bike. Um, the front end of the bike is brand new, the fork's brand new, um, uses what's generally called a bayonet style fork. This is, uh, means the fork actually comes up in front of the head tube. Um, let's just get a really narrow front of the head tube, really aerodynamic. Um, I guess the biggest feature you notice in the fork on this bike is that the brakes are integrated into the fork. Uh, that's a first for the bike industry. Um, we, we built the brake profile to match the outside shape of the fork. Um, the only time that you're going to see the brakes actually um, deviating from the smooth shape of the fork is when you have them deployed, but um, more often than not, you're not going to be riding the brakes, hopefully. Um, so the only thing you can see is the pads, and uh, it's the most aerodynamic setup out there right now. Now, now, when we look at the front end of this bike, uh, we see a lot of bikes doing a bunch of different things, hiding brakes behind forks and, and so forth. Um, and I think a lot of times, as a consumer, we know they're just trying to make it look nice. Do you guys spend time in the wind tunnel or, or any testing on this bike uh, to, I guess, monitor its aerodynamics? Yep, we spend quite a bit of time and money at the wind tunnel. Um, we've tried brakes behind the fork. It's not the best solution. Um, so when we also do deploy a lot of um, CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics, it's software that we use to, um, it's almost like a virtual wind tunnel. Uh, we can check shapes, um, see if something that we're thinking about is an aerodynamic shape or not. Um, that's what led to the cam tail shape, which is our new airfoil shape you'll see on this bike. It's also first in the industry. Um, it, it's kind of one of these things that doesn't look aero. You might think it's just a marketing gimmick, but in fact, um, it's, it's a very aerodynamic shape in many wind conditions. Um, we basically took a full um, airfoil shape that was um, a little outside of the UCI's three to one aspect ratio, which is required for Tour de France racing and things like that. And we cut the back off of it. And this gives you, um, you get a, what's almost a virtual tail that forms on the back. And um, there, there is no tail there, but the air thinks it's still there. And it adapts and shifts to uh, different wind conditions and uh, gives you the uh, lowest drag situation, no matter uh, what wind condition you're in. So when you say that the UCI uh, has some standards, some expectations uh, on the bikes, and uh, the Trek obviously has to meet those because of the riders that it, it uh, has on their bikes. Uh, we see a lot of different bikes out there, especially in the triathlon world, that are doing some, uh, some very out-of-the-box type things, uh, some crazy foils and so forth. Would those not necessarily meet the UCI rules? Uh, yeah, a lot of tri bikes out there, uh, I can think of quite a few. Uh, don't really, they're not, they don't have a pro tour team that's riding their bike, so they're not really thinking about, um, you know, a three to one aspect ratio. They're using a little more uh, freedom there, but we, you know, we thought about doing a full airfoil for the, the tri market on this bike, but this shape performs so well in all different wind conditions that we're sticking with it. I guess look at some of the different pieces uh, that none of us seem to know about. All right, we can move down to the bottom bracket. Um, as opposed to the old TTX that had thread in um, cups, this bike has the uh, BB90 bottom bracket system, which lets us um, create a very wide bottom bracket, um, gives us a lot of stiffness, really lightweight, um, no need for threading cups. Uh, you just pop your bearings right in there, um, precision molded bearing cups right in there. So um, that's a great feature. Right behind that, we have our rear brake that's actually tucked into the chain stays. Um, that's another feature that we did to improve aerodynamics. Um, that's a, an, another feature on this bike that's brand new. Uh, there's a lot of other companies that are putting the brake down under the chain stays, but um, we've, we've got it tucked up in there um, very fast in the wind tunnel. Um, if you move a little up from there, our, our seat stays, we've got them really 
tucked down low, um, less surface area, keeps them out of the wind. Very thin, uh, adds a lot of compliance to the ride, so it's a very comfortable bike to ride as well. Um, on the non-drive side chainstay, you'll notice the Duo Trap. It's a cadence and speed sensor. It's already out there on that 2010 Madone. Picks up your cadence off your crank, and there's actually a sensor that goes through the chainstay. It'll pick up your speed, distance, everything that off the wheel. Uh, it's compatible with all the wireless computers out there today, your SRM, Garmin, uh, whatever computer you want to run, it'll work out with it. So you've given us a lot of, uh, of the features and benefits of this bike, um, and I guess all of us want to know, I guess the big question is, is one, when can we get our hands on it, and two, what can we expect to pay for it? Um, if all things go to plan, you should be able to get one of these bikes in the bike shop uh, next spring. Price-wise, they're not going to be too much different than um, current TTX, so uh, nothing ridiculous. And then also, one last thing is, is that the weight of this bike. Is it, I mean, with all these advancements, are you looking at the same carbon uh, that you used on the TTX before, or are we changing that? Is it something with making things a little smaller? Is it going to be a little heavier? Uh, what can we expect there? Um, you know, we've, we've done a lot of weight analysis, too, with um, some of these parts we've been des designing. and. Um, you know, we're not just going for aerodynamics. The brakes, they, they perform well. They're not very heavy. They're, um, they're, they're still very light. So this bike is going to be lighter than your uh, TTX. Uh, this bike right here is prototype, and it's, uh, you know, it's not the lightest. It's 17 and a half pounds in the production version. You can expect to be lighter than that. Wow. Well, great. Thanks a ton. Anything else that you'd like to add or... Uh... Uh, no, hopefully I'll do it justice on Saturday. Yeah, you got a big day on Saturday. We'll see two of these bikes out here uh, in Kona, one uh, that Chris Lieto is riding and one that Mike will be riding. So expect to see those hopefully right at the front of the pack, right? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs>